that was one of the huge points I took from the pro modules. So like I noticed every time too, oh, they're they're taking 20 minutes to talk about a subject that was barely um, brought up in like the multiple choice questions. And am I even going to see this like on the test and then start to think about, no, this doesn't really seem relevant. And I developed these habits going through FAR and REG. And, you know, due to that, I was, I was able to live like a flexible lifestyle instead of like treating the CPA like a full-time job. And, uh, you know, it worked. But then when I got to audit and um, audit and back, these habits and this foundation I built like, really helped me get through, get through it pretty quickly during a busy season. So, yeah, I was, I was really thankful that I took the time to really build that. Welcome to episode 104 of the CPA Exam Experience podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Colin. So when Colin started the CPA exam study process, he just really found the normal approach, the traditional approach, really frustrating. He felt like he couldn't move on to a new lesson until he had really mastered you know, the current lesson which took a ton of time, more time than it was supposed to take. And then as he moved on, he realized he was forgetting huge portions of all these things he'd spent so much time learning in the first place. So at some point, he came across one of our ads, watched our free training, and from there got our program. And it just completely changed how he was able to study and how fast he was able to move through the material and feel good about it because it included all the re-review that we're always talking about. So in this interview, you will hear him just describe that whole process, how he transformed his study approach from start to finish and became much more effective, much more efficient at studying and moved through the material much faster than he was doing before and understanding it better, retaining it better, and then passing his exams. So before we get into the interview, got to mention the two main things, our free study training webinars. If you've never watched one of those, That's the best hour you can invest in the CPA study process because if your process is not effective and most people that are putting in a lot of time have no idea why or what would make their process effective or ineffective, but that's why you'll find these trainings so eye-opening is because we describe all that in detail with the examples and then the strategies that, you know, we teach our clients. So to sign up for one of those free trainings, you can go to our main website at superfastcpa.com. It's on the homepage or the link to one of the trainings will be down in the description of this episode. The other thing is our free podcast giveaway. Each month we give away three pairs of Powerbeat Pro headphones to three random listeners that we select that have entered the giveaway. Again, that link will be down in the description of this episode or it's at superfastcpa.com slash enter. So with that out of the way, let's get into the interview with Colin. Um, so Pacific time, where are you about? I'm in uh, San Francisco. Awesome. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, we can just uh, go to the beginning. When you, when you started the CPA study process in the very beginning, what were your materials and what were you trying to do each day? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to go into that. So, um, it was around December 2020 where I decided that I should really start going for the CPA. It was my senior year in college. I was planning on graduating a quarter early because I was on the quarter system at Cal Poly to uh, really start getting into the CPA. So in my last semester, my last quarter I took a 24-unit quarter to um, make sure that I could wrap up college as soon as possible to start testing or it's a lot. before they pass the new... Um, that the new act that allowed um, seniors to take the test. But mm. anyways, um, you know, I was really hitting a wall and I started with FAR and I got through like the third module within like three months. So I was going like a module a month. There was and modules. So I started to think I'm, I might not ever pass the CPA. Yeah. And part of it was because, um, you know, just going to Cal Poly and being their accounting department and you know, just trying to retain my knowledge from early on, like we were taught, Hey, we need to get, we need to understand this concept first before we can move to the next concept. So they would teach classes about time value of money and then make sure that you understood that before you moved into 
like valuing debt instruments. It's kind of when with the philosophy, I should really be trying to, you know, understand these early concepts. And then I got a hold of the super fast CPA, refined my study habits a little bit more to um, actually go into the multiple choice questions and realize that I didn't need to um, like master every subject and then keep moving forward in terms of like making sure that the my Becker materials was comprehensive because of what really wasn't. It was just all over the place to be completely honest. And I think that's what really helped me um, fly through the next seven modules within like a month and a half. So the turnaround was crazy too. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, so when you first started, you were going really deep conceptually, like really trying to understand the video maybe before you even read the chapter and then really get familiar with the chapter before you even went on to the practice questions, just that kind of a thing. Yeah. I was going from the video and then reading and then I was getting like 50% on the multiple choice and, um, it was really frustrating too. And then I realized over time when I started doing like the multiple choice first that I would still get fifties or get like 70% and like realize I understood the concept just by like breaking down what they were asking for, because it seems like there's a lot of details within, I, I can't speak for every single, um, like review package, but it seemed like there were a lot of details that I feel someone might might reflect upon wrong because there's just too much content out there to really, um, really ponder. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, um, I would pretty much just set up like a notebook page to the point where I would, um, you know, highlight what the chapter was and then I would make like a frequency table. Okay. How many times is this question coming up? And then I just kept doing that chapter to chapter and I, I would go like, oh, so like far module four consolidation, there's like 15 questions on, um, some acronym and I'd immediately know it too. So I wasn't, I wasn't wasting time at all. Like when I was reading inside, I knew where, um, I knew where to guide myself and that made the process really tough. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I never did anything and that's a good idea. Uh, it would just take time to actually, that's one, that's from one of the pro videos is to when you go into a, a topic, just kind of getting a, an idea by going through the questions and just trying to recognize a pattern, like, okay, I keep seeing questions on this, this must be the primary thing. And then the second most questions are about this. And it really boils down to like maybe three to four key things. Whereas the video itself will just cover, like you said, just a huge, uh, yeah, a very wide range of things. Yeah, exactly. That was one of the huge points I took from the, uh, the pro modules. So, like I noticed over time too, oh, they're talking, it taking 20 minutes to talk about a subject that was barely, um, brought up in like the multiple choice questions. And am I even going to see this like on the test and then start to think about, no, this doesn't really seem relevant and it's just supplementary to this point. So yeah, no, that really helped too. And, um, you know, when I was done with the multiple choice questions and I started to understand that and I had my table next to me, it made, it made more sense to actually, um, put the videos on at, um, twice the speed. Yeah. So that, that really saved me like a lot of time too. And, um, you know, I developed these habits going through far and reg and then before I didn't work, um, you know, due to that, I was. I was able to live like a flexible lifestyle instead of like treating the CPA like a full-time job. In um, some, some cases I did because, you know, I really wanted to make deadlines with what was coming up with work or yeah. in my life. And, uh, you know, it worked. But then when I got to audit and um, audit and back, these habits and this foundation I built like, really helped me get through, get through it pretty quickly during um, busy season. So, yeah, I was... Um, yeah, I was really thankful that I took the time to really build that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So so you're all done, correct? You you passed all four. Done. Yeah, I passed all four. I found out on February eighth. Awesome. Yeah. And uh when I when I looked, I always before I get on one of these, I, I just search your email address in my inbox to see if we've exchanged emails and you uh it looked like you had 
got our course around May. Does that sound right of last year? Um, I think I got it around this time, maybe May. I'm not sure. Um, you know, the whole thing's kind of a blur at this yeah. point. Yeah. And, you know, I know I got it when I was doing FAR. And I think the FAR notes helped the most. Um, just because, I, I mean, I would say FAR and then uh, BC. I think they're the two best topics to get, like, test materials from. Mm-hmm. It's super fast CPA because um, it just the, the amount of coverage is just insane. And, yeah. Let's see what were well, so I was going to ask you how did you how did you use our review notes? Would you kind of read the the section before you jumped into your main lesson, or were you always just reviewing them start to finish, or a combination, or how did you use them? Um, you know, I really used them after the fact that I reviewed the module and I really used them a lot right once I finished every single Becker module and like right before I took the test. So, you know, kind of just an lesson I'd have like the notes on my phone, car rides, um, really long car rides. I'd put on the notes from the beginning modules to the end. And it was crazy. I could go on like a two hour car ride and pretty much be done with all of them. Yeah. Which yeah. is nice too. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think you could travel from, like California to New York and car and like you still wouldn't be able to finish like all of Becker's like video recording. But, right. um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's what I mostly did. And then, you know, the multiple choice questions um, in passing were pretty easy to do um, too. It, it seemed, sometimes it seems like a lot to get like a 30, 33 question packet going online when you're by yourself. And I, I can kind of understand like how um, it might be hard to really do that during your review, especially if you're missing them, but just doing five really quickly and then having it like refresh, you know, it, um, it make it, it feel more appealing to that rather than just sit down and, you know, try and do those heavy test packets. Right. Yep. Yeah. When I was, uh, when I was studying the studying from my phone was like one of my big breakthroughs because once I started working full time, I was like, okay, I have like two hours max a day. I mean, I, I like literally studied how I talk about in those pro videos, you know, that was like my whole thing. And, uh, there's the nice thing about your phone is five, 10 minutes at a time. There's just not the same dread factor as trying to get yourself to sit down for like a three hour study session. Um, and when you do them throughout the day, it can still add up to one to two to three hours and kind of as you're going through your normal day and not having to find dedicated three hours. So yeah, just- Yeah, definitely. Um, That was one thing I took away from the pro module, like you mentioned, uh, you know, doing these notes in passing, or sorry, reviewing these notes in passing was a big focal point of yours and why you were successful. So I adapted that as well too. And, you know, um, it just felt more casual rather than like sitting down and forcing it to. And when I did actually sit down because of that, things started to feel like more casual because I just always had the content wherever I was going and it made me, um, sleep all night before tests and, you know, I could have stuff in the background like baseball and like still really be retaining the content over time. Mm -hmm. I just had to make sure that like, I wasn't doing blocks, but chunks like you, you mentioned too in the pro modules. Cause I mean, um, yeah, to allocate like three hours and sit down. It's just, I mean, I, I'm not sure like too many average human beings can concentrate for like a three hour block, like right away. I mean, right. People are definitely going to tune in and out. So, so your first few weeks into FAR, uh, when you are not weeks, you said it took you a couple months to get through a few modules. Is that what you were trying to do is studying like blocking off several hours at a time to, to study that way? Um, so it took three months cause I started in December and I, I finished college in March and, um, I had that 24 unit core. So I tried to, I really wanted to get the CPA done. Like that was what was more important, but I, did. I had to make sure I could get yeah. my degree. <laughs> yeah. 24 credits. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, I found that challenging and, um, I, I also did really have the time to, you know, do a little bit more. I just didn't know how to do it yet, but I, yeah. I kind of got in this bad habit where I'm like, okay, once I like take a week off after getting the degree, 
I'm going to start and then and I set a personal deadline for me and we're going to get there. And I did two weeks of studying, emailed you and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, it was tough too, cause my, my job offer, it start my, my job started in July. And I just didn't want to get in a gridlock to the point where I was getting stuck in like multiple busy seasons and that I start I just start worried about like the credit laps, like the eighteen yeah. month laps. So um yeah, I just was really trying to be strategic at that point too. And um, you know, that never became a concern until about like December, just because I thought BC was actually kind of surprisingly challenging. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, but you didn't, uh, I mean, you didn't really even get close to 18 months, right? You, you passed. No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, you're just saying that you, when you were started, you, you thought that might be a concern if you had to work and try to pass at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It was definitely a fear. And then, um, I think. I, it took me roughly about a year of studying. I mean, I want to say like the three, I, I don't even want to count the three months in between like <laughs> December and March, yeah. but I'm, I'm going to anyways. So, um, and then I took like two months off after I finished audit. Cause I had one more left BC and I got kind of, um, I got kind of complacent and like, I thought I'd be able to do it. And then I did like restart, like rebuild this foundation again too. And that that's took time. But no, I was never really like too worried about that happening. I mean, I got, yeah, I mean, I got, um, I'm trying to think, but my credit was going to lapse for far. I was like 11 months out from that happening. So it wasn't, too yeah. Much um, you know, there's just those horror stories of like, um, um candidates yeah. moving through far reg or whichever order they go in and they get to that last one and they just can't, mm -hmm. um, they just can't figure it out. And like, I, I thought that was going to be me for BC, but luckily it wasn't. Her. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so did you, so let's you, did you go four for four then? Or did you have any failed sections? I went four for four. Um, you know, I did not think that would be the case. Um, I think there was at least, well, I, I thought I'd pass all of them, but there was, I, it was never like absolutely assured that I did. Um, right. I I really didn't not know if I passed B C or not. I got an eighty seven because <laughs> um yeah, the content's like good. really good there. Um mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't do so hot on the finance questions too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but an eighty seven, you did really well on something. <laughs> um so so what was your daily would you do the two hours in the morning or what was your like from top to bottom? When did you study and then you work and just what did a day, a full day look like once you really had the process down? Yeah, I can break down like a good, um, like time when, um, how I did it in terms of like, just what else I had going on in my life. So, um, in college when I had those 24 unit quarters, not 24 unit quarter, I, I did it in the morning for about 90 minutes and then at night for 90 minutes too. And then when I didn't have anything going on, then you know, I was kind of free freelancing, trying to prepare for the first far test. Um, I definitely picked it up more. I did two hours in the morning and then two hours a night, baby chunks in the middle of the day, and then got to that test. Um, you know, moved moved away from um San Luis Obispo and I had more time because I still had a, a month and a half um from June to um to late to late July to, to study. And that's where I really picked it up. And um, I was doing maybe like two to three hour chunks three times a day because I really wanted to finish reg. And um, believe it or not, actually, I I almost failed my tax class in college. So yeah. I really um, I really wanted to make sure I could get this down. And when I when I almost did fail in college, I, it was a fear that I wouldn't be able to pass reg. And then when I got into work, it started to become... I mean, my flow started to become similar to how um, it was when I had 24 hour units. I mean, sorry, 24 uh, units in college. Mm -hmm. So I just did two hours um, in the morning, then two hours at night. And it worked out great. I mean, I finished audit in a month and a half. Uh, um, audit might be the hardest one to be, 
to be fair that that one is that test is surprisingly hard um yeah do you, do you yeah. work in tax or no sorry in, i in you, already told me. Um, you already no, told I, me no i i work um yeah i do i do audits i'm i do the it risk side so i'm not necessarily gotcha. doing like business controls um mostly doing um controls over like it general controls um audit controls and also looking into service organizations too yeah that's pretty much about it yeah um yeah. but i'm trying to get my test hours right now soon so i'll be seeing more of like the business control side which i'm excited for um yeah that was definitely a big learning curve yeah that's the thing audit can be really hard if you've never worked in like what do you normal auditing i guess i don't know what else to call it uh yeah, yeah a lot of the <laughs> auditing stuff yeah can be, like really confusing because so much of it sounds so similar but then it's obviously when it comes to questions there's only one right answer yeah there's so many like procedures that you can run and then you have to pick the the right one on the test to run but in reality you can run multiple procedures and then also like on the test too like just the test questions i'm sorry i'm not trying to leave um yeah. not trying to leave those questions so right. yeah. yeah there's um there's like a bunch of um procedures you can select and like in reality you'd select multiple and also a bunch of controls you can select to like uh mitigate a risk and like only one to two and sometimes it just doesn't really overlap with what an auditor might actually see too and that that was one thing i noticed when i was taking that test and um yeah i really it really made it difficult some easy going from work and like looking at all this um knowledge and then trying to apply it to the cpa test right right yeah um like in practice in real life things are a lot more messy open-ended complicated than what it is on the exam but it can also kind of yeah throw you off definitely um and then how would you study on the weekends study on the weekends so i've tried to make sure i would study on the weekends um as much as i possibly could Mostly do it in the morning and then a little bit in the afternoon. Um, I, I try to keep it the same as um, like the weekday, but I totally blocked off the weekend when I had a test and like I made sure I, I did that. But you know, I, I wasn't living like a like a sheltered in place weekend where I like studied eight hours a day. Like I picked up overtime. That wasn't the case too. I um I wanted to make sure that when I first adopted the super fast strategy that my, my weekend would be my weekday in terms of like the effort I allocated it. But, you know, um, it definitely varied cause there were the review periods and then there's, there's some big modules that be really daunting that I just wanted to get out of the way too. I mean, I can, I'm not going to name them, but there's several audit ones and like several like BC and far ones where I'm like this this should be done this weekend because <laughs> I'm going to take forever to do it on the weekday. So, I mean, um, it was just picking my battles with how I wanted to yeah. do it on the weekend too. I didn't even study sometimes on the weekend also. Not a good idea, but yeah, the strategy I had made sure that like, I, I really had a flexible plan too. And, um, I think the one test that I went into where I was, where I wasn't confident, but you still passed. So yeah <laughs> um let's see and then you mentioned kind of how you used mcqs what about practice sims or simulations in general yeah so I, I would try and i would try and do those as well too um i'm i rarely get the my normal first try just because um you know getting integrated to the format is hard too and um you know i i realized too that like most candidates um they they really struggle with you know trying to figure out how to tackle them and I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I could either like really give it a good try and like not made sure that if I hit a wall that I was comfortable with just like watching the video or looking at the answer, because, um, I think it was more important really to, um, understand like how to do one just in case the similar one showed up. Cause like the modules, they have like five, five Sims per one lesson. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to like take my time get that right and um you know when i was going through my review process i was i was doing well on sims but there was definitely a big curve between 
the uh, vector sims and the test sims from oh yeah, but also there many times too where I mean I've seen some some sims uh, <laughs> on the test that gave me nightmares like after um, the test while I was waiting for my score. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely it definitely varies. But I mean, sims are sims are hard to tackle, and I think like the best way to do it, like you mentioned, is like wait wait until you hit that wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and kind of like you mentioned, just uh, with the practice sims, instead of, you know, generating some and just kind of staring at it and telling yourself, like, I've got to be able to figure this out. If you don't know something, you just submit it and, like, reverse engineer it, essentially. Break it into pieces, understand the components, the journal entries, whatever, whatever it is that's making it work. And uh, because, like you said, on test day, they're going to be different and so it's it's really understanding i don't know the uh how it works underneath the hood regardless of the structure i guess so yeah exactly i mean i know it seems like a shortcut and it seems like counterintuitive and like some some candidates might believe that you know um just zooming through the multiple choice questions and like stems they might not be able to learn it but um Really, I just call it trial and error. And like, that's how I became like really good at math in high school. Like, it's mm-hmm. not because I knew what the teacher was saying. It's because I would listen a little bit and take notes and try and like understand it, definitely hit a wall. And then when I had like the formulas and the blueprints from when I hit the wall to help guide me there, I, the process was pretty much swift there too. So I took that same methodology that like, you know, helped me really understand like math chemistry like all these like quantitative and um, move forward and um you know i would definitely like encourage someone to like try that out and that it's not really it it seems like a shortcut but in the end it it works and it's it also it helps out a lot too yeah right well it's you kind of you kind of described it in in a nutshell earlier where Again, you know, working through the material the traditional way, watching every video and really trying to understand a lesson before moving on, it just takes so long. And uh, like one one college class on a certain tax topic might only cover like four or five subtopics from what would be on the AICPA blueprints. It just goes really deep. But the CPA exam isn't like that. You always hear it's like a mile wide and an inch deep. So you can't really spend that time because like FAR, for example, covers over 220 topics. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just it just doesn't, it's just not the optimal way. And then you basically described when you learned how to view, view your review course and use it strategically in the way that was like best for you based on the lesson, that's when you just, you know, you went from, spending months on the first section to then passing sections in you know less than like a, a month or whatever you said six weeks yeah, just a huge yeah, difference. yeah exactly um yeah i think a part of that too is just um you know being able to like become comfortable with leaving certain struggles and like pain points behind in terms of like something from a test subject that is really hard like um i think the inventory section for me for example was kind of like one that i i don't know i spent like a week on it because i didn't get it and like that that's detrimental to it and like i'm i'm hearing i'm um hearing about some of my friends who are taking the cpa exam right now and um they're trying to understand like how to like have a fluid process to move on like quickly as possible and you know i just remember myself from that time too where i was um reaching out to people and i'm like i'm I'm getting stressed out. Like I'm not ready to move forward. I can't, I can't let go of the fact that I can't memorize like life or that I don't know how to consolidate or like do a journal entry for an acquisition. And then I just really told myself, like, just let it, let it go. And like, just keep moving forward in that, um, like know that you're going to have to like overcome like this area sooner or later but it doesn't have to be done now mm-hmm. yeah it's just um it's a process for people moving on from college for sure 
yeah. where where things are so comprehensive where you got to go to step one and go to step two. But when you open the review package, you can go to from chapter two to chapter 10 with a refresh mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And then the idea of re-review it just building on your understanding in layers. Like you said, if you spend a whole day banging your head against the wall with like a really difficult topic, like inventory or even just a subtopic of inventory. Um, and it's hard to just grasp, but like a deep level of understanding comes from like revisiting things over and over and over. And, uh, I think that's why just the idea of re-review, I mean, it, it, it seems obvious when you explain it instead of just going deep once and then not looking back at previous topics for weeks or maybe even months, you spend a portion of your day so that every two or three days you're at least hitting everything a little bit and that that understanding just kind of comes in layers and it's just a lot more effective that way. Yeah, exactly. And I know, um, I know you recommend in your pro modules that like you kind of, it's like when you go through each module, you're planting a seed, but you got to go back and water them a little bit. Yep. I kind of, I don't know why I did. I did all the watering at the end and it still was able, it still all came together eventually. But I'm kind of wondering too if that was also maybe like a flaw in my whole process, my journey. Like, how much time could I have cut off if I did do that? I, I don't know. Like, I mean, no, at this point, maybe you could have gone from 12 months to, um, like eight. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, that, that was, was one thing I probably could have done better. Definitely. I'm, yeah, I mean, but I mean, you did go four for four. But so on that note, what did you do for like, what was that review process? Like, how long did you leave before an exam? Like, how long was your final review? And and how did you uh, do it? Oh, it depends. Um, it, de- it really depended on the test. So um, I think for far, I, I took about like, maybe three, four weeks, because it was my first it was my first rodeo. I wanted to make sure I was comfortable and um, I was doing really bad on the simulated exams. And then I wanted to like make sure I could get them down. So then got that one down, um, you know, just doing a lot of um, test questions, test questions, not not so much um, reading, only reading if I was really missing a ton of questions in one category, or one, one chapter. And, you know, that helped. Like I really got integrated with the questions and then, um, you know, when I noticed that I kept getting the same questions over and over again, I, I didn't try and buy like a new test packet, but I'm like, it's time to take the test and it doesn't matter if you feel ready or not, but you should feel good. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the approach I took. And yeah, I wanted to make sure I, after time, I pretty much essentially ran through like almost every relevant question, not every question. And, um, after doing far, I moved to rag and I, I reviewed in about maybe like nine days and took the test pretty quickly too. I think the timeline for audit was about seven days. And then believe it or not, I got COVID right before my BC test. And then, mm-hmm. um, my goal was to review to the point where I was positive to be tested negative when I took the test. Yeah. So that. That took a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that review was pretty long. Yeah. Uh, how was, I mean, well, I, I don't want to take up much more of your time, but COVID was interesting because we finally caught it. And uh, the main thing for me was just like this weird, like the headache had, uh, I don't know, I almost felt dizzy for like a week. And I just would sit at my computer and just could not get myself to do anything. I don't know. It just seems so different for everyone. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, for me, it was, um, it kind of felt like I like fought it off in like the middle of the night and then I woke up and, you know, I just didn't really want to do anything. You know, I, I, it was yeah. kind of hard to, it was really hard to study too. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I was just dealt with that for like a week. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty yeah, similar. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, well, all right. Well, we kind of got, we've kind of gone it through everything. Was there any other uh, breakthroughs or things that you did that you felt like were something really effective that we didn't cover or any other just final tips you have? 
Um, you know, I think we covered like every basis too, but I think, um, I think one thing too that was important also is like having, making sure that you have like peers who are going through like the, the same experience and like taking some of what their, uh, some of their successes and adapting that into your plan too, but also realizing that it, it's like, it's your journey too, to and like, you should be able to tailor it the way you want and you don't have to emulate it. Mm-hmm. based on um anyone else's method um at the end of the day there's no everyone everyone has like a different method and it's built upon from either like your friends or super SCD or any source and just like be comfortable with like integrating like multiple facets of different plans really that's kind of what helped me yeah but other than that um yeah just to highlight it do do multiple choice before before doing um the videos that's definitely like the biggest uh biggest success i had too and then breaking down um things into tables too and you know just getting more organized yeah that was the key yeah i i like that idea of uh actually tracking you know okay these are the these are how the questions break down on this topic like 80% of them were this and then 20% were this or whatever. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Is that in the, is that in the pro module? I, I, think um, I, I just kind of talk about that. I, I don't recommend, I, I'm not saying I don't recommend it. I'm just saying in the videos, I don't say to like make a spreadsheet or anything. I, it's just kind of in general, the whole point of doing the questions first per topic is, is for that reason to just see okay, these are the types of questions I'm seeing. And then I say in there, like, you'll notice that on most lessons, they all kind of boil down to questions about the same three to four things usually. Yeah. And then just you, you making a spreadsheet of it to actually track topics is a, the next step of that idea, I guess. Yeah. Th- yeah. Frequency tables like really help me just, you know, shoot through all of this. Yeah. And that would be interesting too. So you basically broke down Becker that entire, that whole way. Yeah. So how it went, it was like, it was three columns. It was topic. So like a micro subject in the, in the chapter. And then it was notes based on that. And then I would just, you know, drop all lines and like do little check marks for how many times I like saw questions mm-hmm. related to that subject too. But, um, yeah, no, it really helped. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right, Colin. Well, I appreciate you doing the call and uh, yeah, well, I'm glad you found us and uh, that it helped kind of just help you get on the right path. And then it sounds like you just had your own breakthroughs and yeah, did really well. So congrats on being done. That's awesome. Thanks, Nate. Um, yeah, I appreciate all the, um, all the support to you from the app and also the email soon. Yeah. I wish you, I wish you the best. All right, so that was the interview with Colin. I'm sure you found that very helpful and insightful and informative. Seeing how he figured out the study process and exactly what worked for him. So if you did find this episode helpful, please take a second to share it with someone you know who's also working on their CPA exams because, like I say every time, these interviews really are, if you're an avid listener, you'd probably agree, but these interviews are the most helpful free resource available anywhere for people trying to figure out their own study process. Because at this point, there's over 100 interviews where you can listen to 100 successful CPA candidates exactly what wasn't working and what they changed to what was working. So share it with someone you know who's working on their exams. And it would also really help if you would take a second to leave a rating and a review wherever you find these podcasts. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.